Anishé Hossein, political commentator, is with us now, and Tracy DiTomasi, executive director of the No More campaign. Thank you both for being with us. We appreciate it. Um, Anishé, you said, I think the GOP is wildly underestimating its peril with Dr. Christine Blase Ford. What peril do you see Republicans getting themselves into here? Well, first of all, Christy, I think that what we are seeing now um, is exactly why, what we are seeing now online and in reality, is exactly why women don't report. And I think that the GOP are wildly underestimating women and what we have to go through, you know, our, our entire lives. And this is a spectacle, honestly, just to cover up that virtually no Republicans, virtually no members of the GOP actually care whether Kavanaugh assaulted Dr. Ford or not. They're just trying to jam, jam their nominee through. And it's, it's amazing to me in 2018, the parallels that not only are we seeing with Anita Hill, but Christy, this is a demonstration in rape culture 101, normalizing men's sexual violence and blaming women. Tracy, help people understand why women or men who go through something like this do not come forward with it right away. I think it's really common that people don't come forward and there's so many reasons and as you said the hashtag why I didn't report is, is a really good thing to look at but a lot of times it's fear it's fear of retribution um, especially if the perpetrator is in a position of power or has a lot of clout in the community um, the criminal justice system often re-traumatizes victims by having them share their story over and over and over again, often in, in front of the perpetrator. And that often brings um, the, the victim right back to the assault that happened. And they experience all of those feelings and all of that trauma immediately. Uh, victims don't immediately, you said, this was interesting, Tracy, they don't even immediately identify that they have been a victim of a sexual assault. You mean because it just takes so long to process it? I think that sometimes it takes so long to process. And I think also is that we have a, we have a version of in our heads of what a rape looks like and what a rapist looks like. And when, and that typically involves a stranger or somebody jumping out from behind a bush. But 80 to 90% of people know their abuser. And so when they, they see this person that they know and that maybe they had good experiences with in the past, they have to really wrestle with the fact of, did I experience that? Is that what it was looked like? And they have to really combine the fact of, that's not what I thought rape looked like. And that's not what I was expecting. Um, but they have all of the feelings of being violated and of being assaulted. And a lot of times it takes it takes a lot mm -hmm. to go through and to process that to really understand that what they experienced was indeed sexual assault. So Anusha, you know, we're in the, the middle of the Me Too movement and it seems like we, we have to be very careful about this balance. It takes such courage and strength to come out and admit that something like this has happened to you. At the same sense, an allegation does not immediately equate to uh, a crime being committed to, to, to guilt. How do we balance uh, the strength of these, these women who are coming out with due process for the alleged perpetrator? Well, you know what's so interesting, Christy, is that Kavanaugh is not being tried for crimes. He's about to get a massive promotion to a, the Supreme Court, which has the power to tell the president no, which has the power to tell Congress no. And we have every right to know everything about this candidate and to know everything about this nominee. But what's interesting is that we don't need this public performance that's going on right now. Every woman's case is different. Every woman's story is different and experience is different. And Dr. Ford has asked for an FBI investigation. We are on this artificial timeline because the Republicans don't care. They want to jam their nominee in. And we don't need to, you know, have this uh, resolved by Monday or by Thursday. We can allow for an FBI investigation, which is what people are calling for, which is what Dr. Ford is calling for. Instead, we're putting this woman and her character and whether she's lying or not or she's telling the truth on trial. And this is exactly what rape culture is. And I find it very interesting that the president doesn't believe her and is putting out these doubts on whether she's telling the truth or not because he is a self-admitted sexual assaulter. It's very interesting which path the GOP is going down. They're clearly following the head of their party. So, so Tracy, to her point, I want, would like you to answer the same question. How do we balance accusations against due process? Because it seems like either way, from, from either side, people are coming to their own conclusions without there being an investigation. 
Well, I think that we need to listen to survivors and false accusations are very, very um, a small percentage of sexual assaults because victims have so much to lose in coming forward and they don't have a lot to lose um, if they false report. And so I really think that we need to, to look at that and we just really need to listen to survivors and we need to educate ourselves about what it looks like to experience sexual assault and, and all of the different things that survivors can look like after they've experienced that. All right, Tracy, real quickly, do you have any concerns for, um, for Christine Blasey Ford if she gets in front of this, this committee? I think that her character is going to be put into question, and I think that we have a tendency to ask victims, what did you do, instead of asking perpetrators, what have you done? And so she's going to have to go through all of that and, and really have to face that situation yet again so many years later. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be really difficult for her. We appreciate the two of you being here and hearing your voices. Anushe, uh, Anushe Hossein and uh, Tracy Dutomasi, we appreciate both of you. Thank you for taking Thanks the time for us today. Thank you.